Uh, welcome to today's avail availability. Today with us is uh, Minister Tyler Shandro, Alberta's Minister of Health, Dr. James Silvius, Senior Medical Director, Provincial Seniors Health and Continuing Care with AHS, Salima Walji Sivji, Board Chair of the Alberta Continuing Care Association. Minister Shandro will begin today's announcement and then we will hear from other speakers before we take media questions. I'll turn it over to Minister Shandro. Great, thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for today's announcement. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to uh, some of our special guests. We have Dr. James Silvius, who is with AHS. He's the Senior Medical Director for Seniors Health and Continuing Care. Thank you, Dr. Silvius, for joining us. We also have Salima Walji Shivji, who is the Board Chair of the Alberta Continuing Care Association. So thank you, Salima, for joining us for this announcement as well, and for all the hard work you and your members do for uh, all, their, all of your residents throughout the, the province. Now, continuing care has been a focus for me as health minister since day one. My own family has relied on it, and I want every family to have the same trust in it and the same high standard of care that we had. It's essential to residents, it's essential to families, and it's essential to the functioning of the health system as a whole. And I'll give you an example. In the past week or two, we've, uh, we've seen extraordinary demands on EMS. And that's particularly due to the heat wave and people generally getting back to activities that we've been uh, we've put on hold for the last little while. But there's also been an underlying problem for years, and that's delays. Delays in transferring patients in the hospital when they come to the hospital with that paramedic. Now, our emergency departments often can't take a patient from EMS because their staff, the staff are tied up taking care of admitted patients. And those patients are stuck in emergency because there are no beds for them in the medical units at the hospital. There should be beds, but there aren't because patients are waiting for continuing care spaces. Now we need to add continuing care spaces to move patients through the whole system. They call that in the system throughput, but patients aren't widgets. The real issue is that when a patient is in the wrong place, it's not the best care for that patient. We need to build the right spaces so that continuing care is there when the next resident needs it. We also need to update our facilities and to replace older spaces because the standards have changed and the expectations of residents, the expectations of families of those residents have changed. And we need to, new, uh, to use new approaches because the need for new spaces over the coming years in Alberta and throughout the country are only going to grow. The number of seniors in Alberta is expected to double to more than 1.1 million by the year 2040. And the need for continuing care services is, a, is a expected to grow by 62% by the time we get to the year 2030. So today I'm pleased to announce that we're following through on our commitment to bring back a new and improved ASLI program, which was uh, previously called ASLI because it stood for Affordable Supportive Living Initiative. And we're following through on bringing back this new and improved ASLI program to add and to replace continuing care spaces in partnership with operators. And so uh, in last September, if you remember, we announced that AHS was seeking proposals from continuing care operators to add publicly funded spaces without additional capital funding from government in, uh, in communities with the most pressing need for new spaces. And AHS received 189 submissions from eligible operators. And they've qualified 73 proposals in total, and that's in 16 priority communities as well as eight other communities throughout the province. And these projects these projects play an important role in increasing continuing care spaces across the province now, but also into the future. And this is a big undertaking that will add as many as 6,000 new or replacement spaces in these and other communities. We're expecting that about 2,200 will be net new additions in the system, and about 3,800 will be replacements, subject to the, the final contracts. And when I mentioned the 2200, let's also remember that we um, announced 2600 new spaces last year in the year 2020. And uh, out of that 2600, 2500 were net new spaces. 
So what we're talking about here with these further 2,200 net new spaces, we're increasing the system, which is 27,000 new beds. We're increasing the system by almost 20% if we include this year and previous year's announcements. Now, to support this initiative, AHS has allocated $95 million this year to operate new spaces. In total, over the next four years, the provincial government expects to spend more than $400 million. And AHS has moved forward with phase one of this initiative with contracts that will provide 343 additional continuing care spaces in seven communities this year. Now, five of these contracts have already been awarded since they were fast-tracked to add capacity during the pandemic. The other six contracts will be awarded in the coming weeks. The 11 projects in phase one will add continuing care spaces in Calgary, in Edmonton, in High Level, Medicine Hat, Red Deer, Valley View, as well as in West Lock. Now, other projects will follow in the near future and we'll provide further updates as details are, are finalized. Taking initiative, or sorry, taking, a, sorry, taking innovative approaches to develop additional continuing care capacity is critically important. This non-capital initiative is an important first step and we're doing more. Work is also underway to increase continuing care capacity through the capital grant funding announced in Budget 21. And I'll have more details to share on that initiative soon as well. And through this work, more Albertans will have access to high quality continuing care now and in the years ahead. Hundreds of Albertans will have a better quality of life. They'll be closer to family, closer to friends, but more importantly, in communities that they know, communities in the province that they love. And we'll continue to work with our healthcare providers, our healthcare partners to strengthen health service delivery quickly and cost effectively. And Albertans expect, and in fact, they, they deserve a continuing care system that focuses on quality of life for every resident. And that's the, the single biggest issue and the, the single biggest focus of the, the review of continuing care that was released in, in May just weeks ago. It's my focus as health minister, and it's the focus of the healthcare system here in Alberta. And it starts with adding spaces where they're needed so that people don't have to move away from where they, they live. And this initiative could not have happened without the collaboration of AHS. And so I'm very happy to turn the podium over to Dr. James Silvius. As I said, he's the senior medical director for seniors health and continuing care. Dr. Silvius. Good morning, everybody, and thank you very much, Minister Shandro. I'm Dr. Jim Silvius, and I'm the Senior Medical Director for Provincial Senior Health and Continuing Care for Alberta Health Services, as you've heard. We're very pleased to be here today with the Minister to announce the addition of new and replacement spaces within continuing care around the province. As Albertans age and the population continues to grow, it is essential we plan for their care needs for the future in communities that need it the most. The contracting of more than 6,000 new or replacement spaces to the continuing care system province-wide will enable more Albertans to receive high-quality care in their communities while remaining closer to their loved ones and connected to their hometowns. As the Minister mentioned, we began this process last fall as part of future capacity planning. The request for expressions of interest and qualification for currently Contract, contracted and potential new service providers was specifically seeking spaces in designated supportive living, long-term care, and hospice, and other specialty community care spaces and associated care services. We considered factors like population growth and rate of aging when we were prioritizing our communities. 73 successful proponents were identified and added to a pre-qualified list of providers who can offer community capacity without the need for additional capital funding from either Alberta Health or Alberta Health Services. The 31 priority communities identified by Alberta Health and Alberta Health Services include small towns and urban centers in all five of our provincial zones. These spaces are available to be contracted within the next four years 
subject to budget availability and negotiation of agreements. Alberta Health Services now has an inventory of available community care capacity that will help us respond to future needs as budget and planning moves forward to expand and to modernize our community care capacity. If the pandemic has taught us anything over the last year and a half, it's the importance of keeping residents connected to their families and loved ones. Providing care closer to home will enable our residents and families to live in the same communities and support one another while still receiving the best quality care. In my practice working with seniors, I see the positive impacts that staying connected with loved ones has on my patients. Socialization is a key part of remaining healthy and well. Providing care closer to home will also greatly improve the quality of life for aging Albertans. I hear from my patients how having their loved ones close by and able to visit is an important contributor to their quality of life. We'd like to thank all of the respondents who participated in the request for expressions of interest and qualification. And we look forward to working with all of the successful proponents over the coming years to continue to provide top quality care for aging Albertans. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Silvius. And uh, so uh, now the, the board chair of the uh, Alberta Continuing Care Association of Alberta, Salima Waljishifji. Salima. Thank you, Minister Chandra. Good morning. My name is Salima Waljishifji, and I am honored to serve as the board chair for the Alberta Continuing Care Association. On behalf of the ACCA, I would like to thank Premier Kenny and Minister Shandro for including the ACCA in today's announcement. The ACCA represents nonprofit, faith based, and independent operators providing care and services to seniors and persons with disabilities across the continuum of care, including home care, supported living, and long term care. Our members operate almost half of the designated, designated supported living and long term beds in Alberta and are committed to providing the highest quality of care for thousands of Albertans every day. We would like to thank the government for recognizing the increasing demand in continuing care through this phased in initiative that will see much needed new and replacement continuing care spaces. The collaborative approach between the government Alberta Health Services and operators on this important expansion of spaces will help ensure the needs of seniors and others in priority communities across the province will continue to be met. Our members, including Calgary Cambridge Manor, Chinook Care Centre, Newport Harbour Care Centre and Masterpiece Southland Meadows in Medicine Hat are grateful to be among the first 11 contracts to be awarded through this EOI process and we look forward to subsequent contract announcements. Continuing care infrastructure is a vital matter that impacts a significant portion of Albertans. There are numerous safety considerations that we have learned through recent COVID as well as greater efficiencies that can be achieved through the development of new facilities. The facility based continuing care report identifies 42 recommendations that will transform and modernize Alberta's facility based continuing care system, helping to improve access and provide seniors with the highest quality of care and services available. Among these rec recommendations is the regeneration or replacement of existing facility based continuing care spaces with funding earmarked for the development of new spaces where needed. Today's announcement takes a significant step forward in the implementation of these recommendations of which the ACCA is in full support. Providing the right infrastructure where it is most needed will help ensure residents safety and enable us to continue to provide quality care for years to come. Today's announcement is welcome news and we extend our deepest thanks. The ACCA looks forward to continuing our collaboration efforts with the government and AHS on this and other important continuing care initiatives. Finally, thank you to our members and frontline workers who continue to work tirelessly every day to keep our residents safe.
James and, and, and Salima, just through you to, uh, to uh, everybody from HS who, who works in continuing care and all the, the facilities in the HS through, um, through, through Capital Care and through Care West and, and Salima, to, through all your members, uh, everybody in the Christian Health Association of Alberta as well, that uh, all, all the operators who are providing care throughout the pandemic, just please pass on our, our thanks on behalf of all Albertans for all the amazing work they've done for residents and families. So thank you. Um, yeah. Great. Um, so we've got some media in uh, in the room, and we've got um, some on the line. So we'll start in the room. We'll take one question and then one follow up. Please go ahead. Uh, Tim with CTV. Uh, we talk a lot about infrastructure spaces. I just want to know about staffing these spaces. Where is that staffing going to come from? Well, well, the operators will, as we have new spaces, will continue to to hire staff to to be able to staff the spaces. So it'll be on the operators. Uh, well, and HS as well. HS um, has, um, I think, is it uh, about a third of, of the, if you count by beds, not by facilities, but about, about a third of the, the facility-based continuing care system. Um, and so HS is a big part through their subsidiaries, the Capital Care and, and, and Care West, a uh, big part of the system, as well as the, uh, the other, the independent operators. And so um, as we continue to um, see the increased demands, increased spaces throughout the province, whether it's through this one phase of the new ASLI 2.0, as it were, or through the coming phases as well. Um, we're, we're going to obviously continue to have the demand on the healthcare system for, for staff in the continued care spaces. Do you have a follow-up, Tim? Yeah, uh, just a little unrelated. Vaccine uptake, always a big, big issue. Uh, the Premier's hinted a couple times uh, Stampede is going to be focusing a little bit on, on giving some vaccinations. I know there's a, a pancake breakfast event, I believe. Uh, is there details about anything else moving forward as far as uh, getting vaccines uh, administered at the Stampede? Well, uh, we, we continue to push first doses. Uh, I think we're, we're darn near close to 75% coverage throughout the province on a, um, on a province-wide level for first dose coverage. Um, Calgary, though, in our major urbans, we are much higher than that. Um, and, and so uh, thank you to all the Calgarians in particular who, uh, because we know from the Stampede's numbers that I think they're expecting, you know, 90% to the folks coming to Stampede are going to be from Calgary in particular. Uh, but we will continue to, to make sure we're, we're um, offering those second doses. I think uh, two days ago we got to 50% uh, second dose coverage for the province. Um, in next week, you know, in the coming days, we're going to get to 60% uh, coverage for second doses. Um, but, uh, you know, people are interested in getting those vaccines in their arms. And thank you for, to, to all those Albertans for wanting that, those vaccines. We're going to continue to work with AHS and making sure that they have the capacity to, uh, to be an important partner in getting those vaccines out, um, as well as our community pharmacies and our physicians, so that we, you know, speed and volume are going to continue to be our, our focus throughout the province. We'll take the next question from the room. Mike uh, can see you see news. Mr. Shadwell, are, are there going to be mortars and mortar and brick building in these different locations, or are we kind of spreading out those beds and allowing more, more home care? Uh, so taking the money, are you building mortar and bricks, kind of building more rooms at, attaching to these centers? Or are you, like it, my understanding was some of it sounded like it was going to be more home care based, where you're actually still in your home, but we're bringing care. No, no, that might be the, uh, the facility-based continuing care review that you're, you're talking about. And so that did say that we will, it is a recommendation to increase the care hours that are happening in facility-based continuing care, so designated supported living or DSL um, and, and long-term care, LTC beds. And, and as we do that, there is also an opportunity to change the proportion of people who get their care in, in home care. And so that's going to be part of the action plan we're developing for that, that uh, report. But this, this is... Um, this is facility-based continuing care, not, not home care that we're announcing today. So this is uh, operators who are, and, and some of them are net new beds, some of them are, are not. There are going to be some, some refurbishment and, and renovation, but, um, um, it's, uh, but there is obviously going to be, yeah, more, more uh, bricks and mortar for, for these spaces, and, and as well as, as the other phases of this non-capital um, portion as well, as AHS continues to work with the operators and how we, um, we uh, add these spaces to the system. So it's all publicly funded. So they are, there are, um, there, there are independent providers who are operating these beds with 100% publicly funded um, uh, care. Any other questions from the floor? Okay, we'll go to the um, uh, phone lines. Operator, can you put through our next caller? First question is from Stephanie Lazic with City News. Go ahead, Stephanie. 
Hey, Minister Sandro. Um, Alberta's vaccination rates are leveling off a bit here, and the province does lag behind the national average. So I'm just wondering how you are feeling about the province's ability to get to any kind of herd immunity. Well, I, I think uh, I'll leave it for, for physicians to be able to speak to it, to herd immunity. Um, I think that's why we um, have looked at, at certain uh, milestones, uh, whether it was getting to 50, 60, 70 percent um, first dose coverage. Um, and as we continue to look at, um, you know, um, one of the milestones in particular that Dr. Henshaw has, has flagged for me is getting to 65 percent uh, second dose coverage. Um, we've also seen some of the, the what's been announced by, by PHAC federally, the, the Public Health Agency of uh, Canada, on what they're looking for before the, the federal government eases um, border restrictions. But for us, uh, the, the advice we're, we're getting from, from Dr. Henshaw and, uh, and her office is, is that they're, they're setting second dose coverage at 65%. The second dose coverage for us to be um, looking at uh, that, that recovery uh, you know, phase that, that we'd be looking at as a province. So I don't see any concerns with getting to 65%. Uh, you're right that first dose coverage is uh, leveling off, um, but, uh, but we still are seeing great uh, amounts of vaccines getting out uh, every day, thanks to uh, AHS and uh, community pharmacy and our, our community physicians. Do you have a follow-up, Stephanie? Yeah, just quickly here. Um, and what is your government now focusing on with the vaccination campaign to target the more hesitant populations and the rural communities? Well, quite a bit. So last Thursday, we uh, issued a, a med bulletin, as it's called. And this is um, a notice that goes out to uh, physicians through the ministry that provided a new code for physicians that are in a, um, a, a community that has a, a low vaccine uptake. Um, for, for them to be able to, to go through their patient roster and uh, reconcile with, uh, with uh, you know, the, the, the patient records if somebody hasn't been vaccinated, being able to reach out to that, that patient and be able to explain the safety and the efficacy to encourage an opportunity this summer for those folks to get their, their vaccines. So that's one of the things we've done. We'll continue to uh, reach out. Um, there's been opportunities as well through municipal affairs. If you remember the community outreach teams, that uh, help be able to spread the message about isolation in hotels and spreading the message about how to, how to, uh, to um, make sure that um, uh, folks are doing everything they can, especially in, in communities where uh, there are multiple, multiple generations in a certain household. Well, we're also looking at the ways that the, those community outreach teams can um, um, help with, uh, uh, with uptake. Um, what other, is, uh, there's, there's quite a, a robust amount of initiatives that we have been um, implementing and we'll continue to implement throughout the, uh, the summer to make sure that, in particular, those, those communities that, that do have um, not as high uptake as the rest of the province are going to continue to hear that say, vaccines are safe, they're effective, and they're a great way for us not just to protect ourselves, but also to protect uh, everyone else around us who is, might be vulnerable, but also make sure that this is a way for our, um, our, our province to make sure that we don't need um, you know, we, we don't need uh, to go back to it having any further health restrictions. This is about us protecting our economy as well. Great. I, uh, I don't think there's any other questions in the queue, so that concludes today's press conference. Oh, Just one more on the sure, phone. Yeah. Sure. Another unrelated one for you. Last second. Um, cabinet shuffle yesterday. I know a lot of people, uh, including the opposition, were calling for you to be shuffled out of your role. Uh, I just want to know uh, why it was important in your mind for you to stay in this role for the last... Uh, I guess a year and a half of your government's term. Well, wh whether I serve is, is not, not my decision, uh, but I can tell you that I am incredibly proud. I've been proud for the last uh, two years to, to be uh, serving in this role, serving Albertans in this role. Um, this is the most rewarding job I've ever had. I, to be able to, to work to improve um, our EMS system, uh, to improve our scheduled surgeries, to uh, today's announcement, to be able to work on something like this, to add new spaces, to improve our continuing care system throughout the province, um, I, I'm so proud to, to be in this role, um, and, um, and I'm very pleased to be able to continue to be able to serve Albertans to, as I said, to improve continuing care, schedule surges, and EMS. Uh, this, I think this is, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Thanks, I think Kevin. we just have one more question on the line. Uh, operator, can you please put forward our final question? Yes, we have Michelle Belfontaine with CBC. Go ahead, Michelle. Oh, hi, Minister. This is an off-topic question. Um, I want to ask you about the smoking and vaping regulations um, that uh, will come into effect at the end of the month. 
And uh, I noticed that there is provision for cigar lounges in one of the regulations that prescribes rules and modifications that must be made for cigar lounges to operate. And I'm wondering why is this included in the regulations? Well, the, the authority to, to permit or, or prohibit is, um, uh, is delegated in legislation to, to the regs. So if there was to be a, a red tape reduction uh, initiative to be able to permit a, um, uh, a cigar lounge to, uh, to operate um, in, through the province, um, they would be through the regs. Um, so it would be nowhere else other than in that reg. Um, and we have uh, heard from, from folks who have both supported and had concerns about that. Um, our commitment uh, is clear throughout the, the review of the, the TSRA, the Tobacco Smoking and Reduction Act, now including vaping as well, is, is that uh, our, our continued focus is to make sure that we're reducing rates of tobacco use and, and vaping use among our youth. That's going to continue to be our focus. Um, and, um, and, and, um, and, and I think that's clear as well, not even just through the, the review of the legislation that um, uh, concluded in 2020, but also in these regs as well, and having that continued focus on uh, reducing uh, use of those products in, among our youth. Do you have a follow-up, Michelle? Yeah, I do. Um, but it's not clear to me who wants this, because um, it seems to me that municipal regulation or municipal bylaws would supersede um, this, because they prohibit smoking in indoor settings. And the only cigar lounge that I know of exists on the Enoch Cree First Nation, and, and they already have permission to operate there. So who's asking for this? Well, throughout the uh, the review, we did hear from from some some folks that it is it was currently at that time prohibited, um, and there are uh, at the time there were illegal uh, lounges occurring in the province. Um, our focus, as I said, is on the the tobacco use among our youth and vaping use among our youth. Um, and um, so it wasn't somebody asking for it, Michelle, but other than us identifying that, um, you know, if, if our legislation was prohibiting it, um, allowing it to be uh, permitted, if there are municipalities that use their land use bylaws instead to continue to um, prohibit it, that's up to municipalities to make those land use decisions. Great. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.